Hi, in this video we're going to be working through a higher calculator. I call them quick tests, which is just a paper that I put together. So the whole idea is please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, also you can download the paper and the answers from the website in the description. Okay, so let's have a look then at question number one. Uh, question number one deals with uh, quite a common question, which is the HCF and the LCM of 90 and 210. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna use a factor tree. This is quite a common way of doing it. One of the comments I'd make about it is that it's always good to kind of do this as a bit of a hockey stick. I don't know if you can see that there, but the whole idea of the hockey stick is that it means that you don't kind of miss numbers out. And I do sometimes see students where they have this kind of, you know, it goes down a little bit and then you've got the numbers at the bottom. So sometimes the hockey, it's just much easier to do that. But you know, that's just my opinion. It just might be helpful to you. So let's have a look at doing the same process with 210, which is the other number. So 210 then, is I'm going to divide through by two, which means I get 105. Now I know that's divisible by three, and that's gonna be 35 times. I know that's divisible by five, and then also by seven. And you'll see the numbers are ascending, and also they're set out in such a way that when I put this then into a Venn diagram, which is an extremely helpful way to look at these sorts of um, collections of numbers, what it allows me to do is say, well, those twos are the same, so I can put those in the middle. Those threes are the same, I can also put that in the middle. And also the five is the same, I can put that in the middle. Now, left in the 90 is gonna be three, and then left in the 210 is gonna be seven. And once you've actually got that Venn diagram, the middle bit of it, the overlap side of it will give you the HCF and then if you multiply everything out within the Venn diagram that will give you the LCM. Okay so in this particular one the HCF is going to be 2 times 3 times 5 which is going to be a total of 30 and it's these three numbers in the middle which also then means that the LCM is going to be equal to the HCF multiplied by what's left, which is three and seven. Okay, so we've got 30 multiplied by three multiplied by seven, and that's gonna give us 630 for the LCM. Okay, so that's a fairly straightforward way of doing that kind of question. Please do uh, add a comment below. I can always put you uh, onto a playlist with some more examples of HCF and LCMs, and I might also put them in the description below as well. Okay, let's move on to then to question number two. So question number two is one of those very wordy type questions that you really got to spend a bit of time just kind of working through. So it says there's only blue, black and red counters in a bag. And then it's this seven times as many blue counters, black counters. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write blue to black to green. OK, then reading this through, if we have one black, it means we've got seven blue, but it also means we've only got half a green. OK, well, we can't have half a green counter. So what I'm going to do is just double everything up. I get 14 to two to one, which is actually the blue to black to green ratio. OK, which is going to be 14 to two to one. And that would be the answer to that particular question. So it's fairly straightforward, but you do have to make sure you read um, the question through thoroughly. Okay, let's move on then to question number three. Please do stop the video, have a go at the question, compare your answer. Okay, so question number three is gonna be all about working out the volume of a triangular prism. And again, fairly common type of question. And really it's just a case of working out volume, which is going to be area times depth. So volume equals area times depth. So what we do first of all is work out the area of this triangle. Well, area of a triangle is usually base times height divided by two. Some people will say it's a half base times height and that's perfectly fine. I don't have a problem with that. There's sometimes slight differences in the way that formulas are being taught. However, providing it's base times height divided by two or a half base times height means exactly the same. Okay, so um, if we look at the diagram then, 
we've got a base of 8.5 and a height of 7.2 and we're going to divide that by 2 and I've put it in brackets because that really is the area of the triangle and we then need to multiply by the depth of the prism itself which is 12 Okay, put all that into a calculator and you should get 367.2. And remember the units are centimetres cubed for the volume of the prism. Okay, let's move on then to question number four. Question four, again, a bit wordy. It does need a little bit of time to kind of work through and it's all about compound interest. There is a playlist. And also if you go through to 3minutemaths.co.uk, you'll be able to download a similar sort of worksheet that will give you some more examples of compound interest, growth and decay type of questions. Okay, so let's move on then to question number four. Now, question number four, we've got uh, Nissar investing £3,000 in for four years in a savings account. So what we basically mean is for the first year, he gets 2.5% compound interest in the first year. So at the end of the first year, we've got £3,000 multiplied by 1.025 and if you like to the power of one and that's going to give him 3075 pounds so if he puts his money in on january the first at 3000 pounds by january the first of the next year he's going to get 3075 pounds back OK, what he does then is he puts it back into the interest account. But this time, after a further three years, he gets um, £3,215.46 back. So what we're saying is £3,215.46 is equal to the original amount, 3075, multiplied by the multiply, which is what we're trying to find, to the power of three years. Okay, so all I need to do really is make this multiplier the subject of the equation. So I get 3215.46 all divided by 3075. Now that, don't forget, that's multiplier cubed. So if I do the cube root of that, I'm actually going to get the multiplier. And when I calculate that, I'm going to get 1.014999. Okay, so once I get that, I get the multiplier is equal to 1.014999. Okay, so to one decimal place, that's going to be exactly the same as, remember, this is the decimal equivalent of 101.4999%. So therefore, the multiplier or the rate of interest is going to be 1.5% to one decimal place. Okay, if you're not sure about that, always add a comment below. I'll always come back to you. Okay, let's move on to the next question, which talks about Carrie taking a run. Okay, so Carrie runs at this type of speed. Now, the important thing with this one is, is without using a calculator. So what we've got to do is show her speed. Now, most people will work out that speed equals distance divided by time, and that's perfectly fine. So really, this is more an exercise in being able to um, calculate this, really. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to make this um, 16350 divided by 327, because when you're dealing with whole numbers, it just makes it a whole lot easier rather than trying to deal with the decimal. Now, at this point, you could do a very long long multi, uh, division type question and it would take you a while to do it. So what I suggest you do is you use the whole idea of equivalent fractions to kind of make these numbers a little bit easier to deal with. Let's have a look and I'll show you what I mean. If I divide the top and bottom by three, what I actually get is that the bottom is going to be 109 and the top is going to be 545. And because you're only dividing by three, you could do that by short division so it's much much easier to do and you can just do that elsewhere on your working okay but what you'll see hopefully is that 109 goes into 545 actually five times exactly five times because five times nine is 45 and five times 100 is 500 so providing you can get to the point where you're dividing top and bottom by 
three, it's a fairly, I say a fairly straightforward calculation. It just takes a bit of kind of confidence really to have a go at those sorts of questions. Okay, so the final one on this sheet is going to be question number six, which is factorizing. We want two numbers that when we multiply them together make minus seven, when we add them together to make plus six, so that's gonna be plus seven and minus one, and we would write that as x plus seven multiplied by x minus one. Okay, so that's question number six dealt with, and we're gonna move on to question number seven onwards. Now, question number seven onwards, Fairly straightforward grade four question that you're going to come across on a fairly regular basis. So solving algebra equations, kind of useful to kind of go through these sorts of things. And what we're going to do is just find the value of y in this particular case. So what I'm going to do is say, well, actually, I've got 7y and 4y there. So I'm going to minus 4y from both sides. Because if I do that, it means I lose this 4y and I get 3y plus 15 equals minus 6. And then I'm going to minus 15 from both sides and I'm gonna get three y equals minus 21. If I divide by three, both sides, I get y equals minus seven. So y equals minus seven is the answer to that particular question. Okay, so we're now gonna move on to a fractions question. Fractions are very, uh, useful, but also quite highly tested, particularly now. You do tend to get a lot more fractions questions, particularly in foundation papers and the beginning of higher papers on the non-calculator papers. You will come across these. OK, um, so let's have a look at this one. It takes five and two thirds of an hour to paint a room and three and a half hours for the paint to dry. So. Um, we just basically need to add those fractions together, five and two thirds plus three and a half. Now, the easiest way of dealing with this is to add the uh, whole numbers together. So I'm going to get eight. And then basically we need to convert this two thirds and convert this half to having the same denominator. So two thirds is the same as four over six. Half is the same as three over six. That's actually going to give you nine and one six. Or if you prefer this bit of it will give you eight and seven six, which I can then convert over to nine and one six. OK, I hope you've covered, you, you're OK with me on that one. Um, if you do put a comment below, I do need to shoot some videos on, fra on fractions, so it might prompt me a little bit. OK, so nine and one six, um, we're looking at how long. Well, one six of an hour is exactly the same as saying 10 minutes because one sixth of 60 minutes is 10 minutes. OK, so to do this whole room, it's going to take nine hours and 10 minutes. And that would be the answer to this particular question. OK, so we're moving fairly good speed now. We're going to move on to question number nine. So question number nine is work out an estimate for the value. So the important thing with that is that you recognise it's to one significant value. Bigger. OK, so let's have a look at rewriting that, making the numbers a little bit easier to deal with. OK, and again, this is a non-calculator. It is an estimation. So it's going to be 700 multiplied by 6 divided by 0 0.2. And if you're not sure about how I've done that, let me know and I'll be able to point you in the right direction. So 700 times 6 is going to be 4200 divided by 0 0.2. Now, the problem there is you're dividing by a decimal. So we've got to make that whole number. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to multiply the denominator by 10. If we do that, we're going to multiply the numerator by 10 as well. But it does make the calculation a lot easier. OK, so 0 0.2 multiplied by 10 is going to be 2. And the numerator multiplied by 10 is going to be 4200 with an extra zero on the end. Now, 42,000 divided by 2 is 21,000, which is actually the answer to this particular question. OK, Final question on this particular video is going to be question number five, where it's a grade five, question number 10, sorry, where it's a grade five ish simultaneous equation. Again, if you're not sure about this, there are a few playlists on the channel that I can put you in contact with or put you point you towards. OK, so let's have a look at how we're going to do this. So the problem we've got is we've got two X 
plus 5y equals 16 and also 5x minus 2y equals 11. So uh, we've got different values of x's or different quantities of x's there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that one by 5 and that one by 2. Now the reason I do that is because I end up then multiplying everything on the top row by 5. So that's going to give me 10x plus 25y equals 80. And the bottom row by two, so that's also gonna give me 10x, and then I'm gonna get minus four y equals 22. Now what that allows me to do then is when I subtract them, I can just do 10x minus 10x, which means I get rid of the x values and I can just concentrate everything onto the y values. This is a very common way, it's called elimination. Sometimes you get an alternative way, which is substitution, but in this particular one, elimination is by far and away the easiest way of dealing with these simultaneous equations. Okay, so let's finish this one off. I'm going to get 25y minus, now be careful, it's 25y minus minus. So a minus and a minus together is going to be a plus. So I'm going to get 29y, and then 80 minus 22 is 58. OK, so what that will give me then is dividing through by 29, y will equal 2. OK, so that's uh, hopefully OK for you. Again, if you're not sure, let me know and I'll try to help. All we do then to find the value of x is we take the value of y and we plug it back in. And then we end up hopefully with a value of x and a value of y. OK, so if we take that value of y, I'm going to substitute it. Now I can choose any one of the equations that I've got. I've got that one or that one. I suggest we do this one. Now the reason being is because it's positive values of y. It just makes your life a little bit easier. So 2x plus, and it's going to be 5 times y. So in other words, it's 5 times 2 equals 16. Or if you like, 2x plus 10 equals 16. Okay, so then if I minus 10 from both sides... I'm going to get that and that go, and I get 2x equals 6, so therefore dividing by 2 both sides, x must equal 3, and that would be the answer to the question, and also the end of this particular paper. Appreciate this video has gone a little bit longer than normally, kind of 3 minutes or so, Matt, but hopefully it's been useful for you. Please do add a comment below if you need any help. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.